Hi, my name is uh, Vivek Tomer, and I am a principal data scientist at Providence, and I'm here to present uh, my experience um, in the de-identification uh, process that we developed over the last one year. Uh, one of the large part of the de-identification process is um, using Johnson Lab uh, software, and uh, I just want to describe like our journey, how we you know, went through the entire process and how John Snow Lab helped us out. So, um, you know, before I get into the kind of the details of, of the process, uh, I want to kind of take a little bit of time to uh, tell more about Providence, you know, a little bit about the Providence and um, who we are, what we do. And as you can see on the, on the left side of the screen, um, you know, Providence is um, is a nonprofit organization. Uh, has over 120,000 caregivers, 36,000 nurses, and 25,000 physicians. Um, so that's uh, you know that's sort of the uh, high level stats on, on Providence. Um, one of the things that I want you to focus on is is the uh, patient visits. So we have like over 25 million patient visits. Um, so you can imagine. Uh, the amount of data that is generated by um, by, by the patient uh, patient volume. So, and that kind of brings us to um, uh, to our uh, de-identification uh, problem that we are trying to solve. So, you know, we have this uh, large amounts of data, and you know, we want to share that data with uh, with the researchers as well as we want to share this data with third parties. So, um, and this. This was like over a year ago that we started to think in the direction. My boss, uh, Lindsey Michael, it, it was his vision to uh, to de-identify, uh, you know, every single table um, we have in our advanced computing platform, so that anyone who needs access to the data can have access to the data. So, so the problem that we were facing was that you know we have around you know 87 tables on our advanced computing platform. And uh, you know each table has you know over a billion rows of data. I mean that's sort of the minimum. Um, but you know it's not just the number of rows, but uh, each uh, row has uh, large documents in it, uh, unstructured data. So you know free text data, whether it's uh, lab results or patient notes data. So there is tons and tons of information that is unstructured, um, and um, and we need a way to solve uh, the de-identification uh, problem for these, for these tables. So essentially uh, the goal, uh, the problem statement was that, you know, we're gonna uh, de-identify 87 tables uh, so that we are able to share the data and um, we should have daily updates. So, you know, every day we receive uh, large amounts of data and um, how can we, uh, have a process that updates the notes and other data daily. Other thing is, you know, these are 87 large tables, uh, has a lot of patient level details uh, that goes up from one table to the other. So we have like over 40 different uh, patient specific information that needs to, uh, the differential integrity of those uh, fields needs to be maintained. So that was the other, another big challenge. Of course, it has to be HIPAA compliant, so we can't share our data unless it is it is HIPAA compliant. So, as you can imagine, uh, you know this is a, a, a problem that requires a lot of effort from uh, uh, from the technological perspective, uh, from the compliance perspective. Uh, so, you know, what we started to do was like the first thing we wanted to do uh, was to understand how can we use uh, available technologies, uh, available LLP technologies to solve this problem. Now we classified this into kind of a three major part of the problem. So we had a structured data and we have unstructured data. And within unstructured data, we have a small text and a large text data. When I say small text, what I mean is two or three sentences long uh, documents. And when I say large text, that means around uh, on an average, 100 plus sentences in each document. And so, you know, breaking down this, and, and I'll go more into the details uh, in later in the slide, but this kind of gives you an idea of uh, of the uh, 
the size of the problem and um, you know the compute resources that we need, the technologies we need uh, to to de-identify this. So I think the first step was for us was to kind of understand you know what's out there in the market that we can use to solve this problem. And uh, uh, so you know we basically tried to uh, we explored you know what uh, single node NLP libraries are there, what distributed NLP libraries are there. Um, and, uh, you know, the goal was to, of course, scale this, uh, this problem, um, because we, when we work with this amount of data, the, whatever solution we have must be able to scale. So that was the number one requirement for, uh, for any solution. And we explored all, uh, you know, different single node NLP libraries and, you know, there are ways to, you know, use them and basically you can use Pandas UDF um, and scale those solutions. But we wanted something that seamlessly integrates into our, our Azure stack. And, um, you know, Spark NLP was kind of the obvious solution for us because, you know, it's it's Spark native uh, ML library and, um, you know, it has, um, it's it very easily integrates into our uh, our Azure stack. So. So that was kind of the uh, what led us to um, look into um, John Snow Labs, and and you know try to uh, solve these problem using the uh, Spark NLP library. So uh, essentially, uh, what we looked at originally was you know some you know free pre-trained models, and uh, and we worked with John Snow Lab to get a free trial, and we kind of started our. Um, uh, our process of of de-identifying the data, and I'll I'll describe in the in the next slide. Uh, you know, I know this is a <laughs> it's a busy slide, but this kind of captures the uh, the entire uh, de-identification process um, that we follow. So, um, you know, as I described earlier, you know, there are really uh, three parts of this problem. So we have a structured uh, data de-identification. Uh, then we have uh, small text uh, de-identification, and then we have large text de-identification. So the goal was really uh, here was to develop an end-to-end -end, uh, data request product that de-identifies the structured and unstructured data in our advanced computing platform. So um, first thing that we did was uh, to deal with the structured data because that was the easy problem to solve. Uh, because all we had to do, well, I mean, it was easy problem to solve, but it, it took us, you know, a long time to solve it. Um, so uh, essentially, the structured data de-identification is, you know, basically just uh, uh, relational data sets that we um, use the safe harbor method and uh, you know, we mask the sensitive patient details by uh, by using, uh, you know, a basic in in encryption methodology. Uh, the hard part here was to really uh, uh, write a code that maintains the referential in integrity over um, over different tables. So uh, now, once we do the structured data de-identification, um, it's fairly accurate. So we know that the uh, the fields that we are masking or hiding or encrypting. You know they won't be re-identified, and so the re-identification risk is is nearly zero uh, for the structured data. The real problem is uh, when it comes to the unstructured data and a free text data, and that's where um, you know the uh, John Snow Lab became really helpful for us. So again, the unstructured data is classified into small text de-identification and the large text de-identification. Uh, small text is really uh, one or two sentences long free text data, uh, for example, a lab result, you know, and lab results, you don't expect any PHI leaking into it, but due to coding errors, uh, you know, there are situations where uh, patient level details can leak into it. So, you know, for example, you can have, um, you know, email or, or a date or a telephone number, et cetera, can leak into the, um, into the, uh, into the small text data. So I think the first we try to use regular expressions, um, and we are using regular expressions uh, currently. Uh, but you know the problem with the regular expression is that you know the name of a patient 
we were not able to uh, de-identify the name. Um, and, you know, we tried like a name dictionary and all that stuff, but that didn't work really well. So uh, using um, John Snow Labs uh, freely available uh, NER models, uh, we were able to uh, de-identify, you know, large amounts of our, uh, uh, our small text data. And um, essentially, uh, there were things that were missed by the uh, by the NER models, and we kind of combined uh, the regular expression with the NER model, and that gave us pretty accurate results. You know, we were getting uh, accuracy uh, of about ninety nine percent. So, um, so the combination of regular expression and uh, and the NER models uh, uh, from John Snow Lab worked really well for the small text. Now. The problem and uh, sort of the main topic of uh, of this uh, presentation is about the large text de-identification. And the large text is uh, uh, is the, basically a patient notes data, and that's that's what we are uh, working right now, even as we speak um, on making solving this problem. And um, and John Snow Lab uh, models, pre-trained models, uh, are really useful in this. And you know, so this is kind of how it worked. Uh, we, when we looked at this uh, patient notes data, we tried to use these uh, single-node um, NLP models, for example, using Spacey or or other libraries, and uh, it was incredibly difficult to scale. Uh, because we had to do uh, 200,000 nodes daily. That's our daily load. And plus we have you know, over 700 million patient nodes data in the historical load. So daily load, uh, uh, we, we were able to handle some of it uh, by using other software, uh, but the, uh, the pre-trained models from John Snow Lab, uh, the de-identification um, models from the John Snow Labs were, were, were really helpful. Uh, to to de-identify those uh, those results, and you know again the process we followed here was the same as as for the small text where we essentially went from uh, uh, we essentially went from uh, looking at the uh, looking at the text uh, the accuracy of the small text and then combine it with the uh, with the regular expression. So um, and I, I'm gonna kind of show you the results, you know, of our analysis, you know, how we did it and, um, and, and you know, the process that we followed to, to validate uh, the NER models and make sure that they were, they were HIPAA compliant. Um, the, one of the other things that we do is uh, to, to assess the re-identification risk, uh, we basically do a random sampling and uh, human expert testing. So the idea is to, uh, use the uh, the models like in, in this case the Johnson lab NER models or the identification models and then once we have the output we take a random sample from those output and then we have human expert looking at that and seeing you know uh, basically um, labeling those data whether it has been done correctly or not and um, and that that's how we determine the re-identification risk and that's how we determine the uh, we determine how accurate uh, the models are. And of course, it's an iterative process. Uh, so we once we do that, uh, there are several um, methods uh, that we use to essentially do the random sampling. And you know, once the random sampling is done, uh, we iterate over it. And whatever we learn from the random sampling, we kind of go back and, um, and, and update the models based on that. So uh, one of the uh, the uh, result of this process that I'm showing you here on the slide is is uh, you know we actually delivered uh, this one of the the identification data set to uh, uh, to Truveda uh, and basically it was just a basically simple cohort of ten thousand patients but it kind of uh, showed how our process works and we could successfully uh, share that data. With, with, with lots of PHI information in it, and uh, so so that's kind of and we are still we are still working on it. We are still trying to improve this process, but um, but it, it's 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 it has become quite effective, quite accurate over uh, you know last one year of of, of doing this. Um, 
So here is a uh, kind of the uh, work that we did with the large uh, text uh, data, and and um, and this is this slide kind of describes the the sampling methodology we used and the the accuracy of the results that we got. Uh, so as I as I was describing in the previous slide, uh, you know, we essentially we took the uh, patient data and then uh, we applied the Johnson Lab model to it, and once we applied that model to it, uh, we took a random sample uh, from uh, from that output, and then basically had uh, you know labeled it by the human experts to determine how accurate the results were. Uh, we combined the results with uh, with the regular expressions uh, to improve if you know if the uh, if the NER model was missing some of the uh, some of the PHI information we were, we used the regular expression to uh, to fix that. So uh, to give you some uh, some results here, uh, you know, we uh, doing our random sampling. Uh, there were a total of around thirty four thousand seven hundred one sentences that were de-identified, and uh, and we found that the PHI was leaked in two hundred eighty one or 081 percent of these sentences. Now there are two really uh, two major issues here. One is um, the PHI at a sentence level, and then the PHI at a document level. So uh, at a patient notes level. Um, so what we really did was to minimize for each sentences uh, the PHI leakage by combining uh, with the regular expression. So um, so really good performance here. I mean we are continuously improving it, but you know this is. Uh, Quite good, and um, you know we had it evaluated by internal auditors, and um, and you know they we passed the internal audit uh, on this process basically. The other issue is uh, the speed of uh, you know at which uh, the models are uh, the results are are generated, and uh, you know basically we are using it's pretty fast. You know we are using currently um, a, a medium size. GPU cluster with 15 nodes, um, and you know, I, as you can see, with 100, 112 gigabytes of memory, and uh, 100,000 nodes, uh, we, we can de-identify in like around 45 minutes, and um, and like half a million nodes, we can uh, de-identify in uh, 147 minutes. So this is really good because this helps us. Uh, to do our daily load within a couple of hours using like a moderately side cluster, um, so you know it works out really well um, by by just using a, a, a medium-sized cluster. You can certainly increase the performance. You know you can in increase and uh, and we are doing that with the uh, with the historical load. We are we are using much larger clusters. Um, so so yeah. So this is kind of the uh, the overall. Um, the identification process that we are following and um, um, essentially you know it's an iterative process so it is you know our goal is to really uh, remove every possible phi in our data set and as you go higher you know in the accuracy it's difficult to you know gain more performance um, and gain more accuracy but you know we will we'll keep trying so so this is kind of the overall process that we followed, and um, you know, and Johnson Lab has been really helpful in this process. So, uh, so that's my presentation. Thank you.